So I think the final detail I want to add is some sort of holographic panel that's floating above the surface. And we're going to need Maya a little bit more for that. So I'm going to import my low poly just for scale reference and turn off the grid. And I'm going to create a new plane and then just move it into position. Maybe right here is fine. Not something like this. And you know, one thing I would suggest if you want some sort of like scrolling effect where your text is scrolling and uh, maybe do something like this, like you extrude the edges and then maybe bevel these. So as the text is scrolling, it's also going to bend over the surface, but that's not really what I'm going for right now. So I'm just going to stay with my, my simple plane and I think I'm happy with this. So I'm going to hold down a and left click and delete the history. And again, well, for the transformations, and all we need now is to UV map this. So I'm going to go to the UV editor, select this face, mapping, my mapping options, and I'm going to reset them just in case. And I'm going to set this to be Z. But nothing really happened, so what I have to do now is go to the largest value in my projection, in my channel box, copy that into the smallest one. And there we go, this is a much more accurate projection. And that's it, that's all we need from our little panel. So let's export this. And we're gonna use OBJ, OBJ is gonna work just fine. And we're gonna call this hollow panel. And these settings are also fine. If you want, you can import your panel right away, but we don't have any textures yet. So it's gonna look like this. Oh wait, I moved my camera. Don't want to move my camera. So let's actually make some textures now for our panel. Wait a minute. First, let me create a new camera because I don't want to mess up the cameras that I already have. So I'm just going to duplicate one of my existing cameras and call it preview cam, and then make sure you select it. So now I can move around and then just when I want to render my, all my images, I can just go back to the original view. So preview cam it is. Oh yeah, let's actually add our textures. So I made three textures. I just had some decals lying around. So I made them roughly the size of my UVs. They're square textures, but I made sure they fit inside my UVs. So this is texture number one. It's just a black background white image with a little bit of red glow. And I made a duplicate of that and I added a little bit of noise on it. It's just a noise filter. And then the third one, I found this one on Google, uh, Evil Skull or something like that. And I add the same noise. So these are my three textures. Quick example of how I made my images. So it's just a black background and then a screenshot of my UVs so I know what the safe uh, work area is. And then just some white image. I'm sure you can find something on Google. And all I did was add an outer glow effect. So this isn't Photoshop, but the way you do this in Photoshop is you double click on your layer and that will open your uh, effects window. And there should be something called outer glow there as well. And that's pretty much it. I just saved out a JPEG. Let's apply the first one. So we click on our panel material, which is the default and enable emissive and then find our texture. Where are you at? Okay, image number one. And we can't really see it yet, so we need to enable transparency as well. And click on add, and then load up the same image. And we don't have an alpha channel because we're using JPEG, so I'm just gonna set this to be R. And the problem with doing with uh, reusing the exact same image is that our glow is not gonna be as visible anymore because when I made it, I didn't sell it, set it to 100% uh, intensity, or I should say opacity. So I'm gonna have to mess with my values here to get a little bit of the glow effect back that I had uh, right here. Well, yeah, whatever. So let's actually set this to be a little bit more red and then glow over here, full red. And then maybe increase the intensity of the whole thing as well. So yeah, this looks a little bit more like what I had in my textures. 
But before I bring in my other textures, I want to animate this one. I want to add a very light strobing effect. So let's rename our material hollow one, and then let's expand our timeline. And I want this animation to be two seconds. So at 30 FPS, that means we need 60 frames and press enter. Okay, so let's expand our keyframes as well. And under our material, which I just renamed, go to emissive and then intensity. And here is where we're going to animate our strobing effect. So this is the tedious part because there doesn't seem to be an easy way of doing this. And what I'm talking about is we have to fill our entire timeline with keyframes. So the easiest way I found to do that is to just double click on your graph. Whew. So the next step is to select one keyframe, skip the next one, and then control click on the following one. And we want to do this for our entire timeline. Remember to skip one keyframe. Now we're going to offset our selected keyframes. So we're going to move them down all the way down. And if we can't go further, then just zoom out with your scroll wheel and then keep going down. So I want to go down to like 1.5, 1 1.4. You can see it right here changing. You can also enable this little button that will show you the values of each keyframe. So I want to go down to 1.4. And then I think I should have moved this keyframe as well. Oh, whatever. So next step is to actually select all of your keyframes again and set the interpolation to use this like staircase thingy. And check this out. If we press P, we now have a very mild strobing effect for our little panel. So let's add our other textures because that's really going to add to the effect. For our texture number two, I'm going to reuse this panel. So control D and rename it and we also have to duplicate the material because we need a completely different texture so control d doesn't work here so use this little button let's rename this one as well hollow two and let's find our other textures here they are number two and replace this one as well and just so we can see the difference and there is no difference because we forgot to assign our duplicate material to our second panel. There we go, this is the noisy one. Excellent. So one more thing is I wanna offset this second panel a little bit, maybe like over here. Nothing crazy. Oh, a little to the back as well. Perfect. Let's disable the visibility of our new panel and animate it. So, oh, make sure you click on it. Then go to visible. Here it is. Set a keyframe. And I want it to turn on around here, maybe. So set a keyframe and then one more. And this one, we're just going to drag up. And it can only be a value of one and zero. So it's very easy to just like drag up this keyframe. And I want it to turn back off right here, maybe. So keyframe and then one more and then drag this one down. So this way it will only show up a little bit and then it'll turn back off. And I want to do the same thing again a bit further down the line. So maybe here. So let's do the same thing. There we go. And looking at this, I think I want to do one more thing. So first, let's turn down the intensity of our secondary panel. So let's set this one to be one. Yeah, because it was a little too bright before and I just want one. There we go. And I also want to animate our first panel. So I got an idea after offsetting the second one. 
And we have here under texture, we have some interesting things we can do. We can offset our UVs like this. And this is how you would normally get a scrolling effect. But I don't want to do scrolling effect. I'm just going to use this to distort our uh, UVs a little bit. So I'm going to find that attribute over here. And it's under main. Which one is it? Offset V, I think. Yeah, offset V. So I'm thinking I keyframe the start and then one, maybe one frame uh, after I suddenly change the offset. Let's try 0.5 and that actually flips them. Oh, I forgot to keyframe it. You can use auto keyframe if you're uh, a forgetful person. But I prefer adding keyframes. So this way it suddenly flips for a bit. And then the other one shows up and maybe it flips back. And I'm also thinking I might actually leave these uh, frames uh, as like uh, with the curve interpolation because I think it makes it look a little bit more interesting. Notice how it like moves slowly up and down because of these curves. <laughs> Looks like an error. Probably want to set another keyframe here. And I don't know, let's just do something interesting. Then over here again. Keyframe. Move this down. And then move this back up. Oh yeah, and then we have to actually put it in its original position. So let's see what that looks like. I don't even know. I was just messing around. It's not too bad. Improv for the win. So my final panel, I'm just going to duplicate the first one again. Remember that we have a skull texture and we haven't used that one. Actually, skull. Put this one at the bottom. That's not what I meant. There we go. And let's duplicate our first material again. And don't press Control D. You need to use this button. Keep everything organized. So let's assign it. Didn't I move this one down? Okay, stay there. And then let's find our texture again. So just so we can see it, there it is. And I want this one to just like completely turn on near the end. So let's just press P. Maybe right here. So keyframe. Oh wait, select the channel that you want to keyframe. And then just leave it on. Cool. So one thing I want to do is I don't just want the skull to randomly appear on top of my other panels. So what I have to do is disable the other two and make sure that those aren't visible whenever the skull is. So let me just check. This is 124 and then this is 125. So let's go to panel one, visibility, and at 124 we keyframe and at 125 we keyframe and turn it off. And let's just check our panel too, just in case. There's nothing there, so we don't actually need to keyframe anything. And I'm gonna scroll slowly just so we can see the effect. So this one's kind of like moving. That the second one shows up a little bit, and then bleh, dies. It's not too bad. Could be worse. 
the only thing that bothered me right now is that I flipped the original panel by messing with the offset, the UV offset, so now this one doesn't match the second one. So I'm just gonna flip the second one as well, but I'm not gonna animate it. I'm just simply gonna put 0.5 here, no animation, and that's it. So now, nothing happened. Wait a minute, what's going on? Oops, uh, I changed this on the wrong material, so set it back to zero. Make sure you offset the correct material. So 0.5, there we go. Perfect. So this is the final animation. It's pretty much the same. And I definitely could have made this way more complicated. More than I made it seem, in fact, because there are just so many things you can do. I could have added yet another uh, panel and animate some sort of static or, I don't know, some scrolling lines, like the ones you get on like really old monitors. There's so many effects that you can animate. We can animate the colors. I used add, but you can use dither instead and get a completely different effect. I mean, it's up to you to experiment. And I'm just going to leave it like this because I think it's good enough and it gets the message across. So one more thing, how do we actually render this out? Go to capture, video, and then just set whatever settings that you like, and then click export and export it.